Hello and welcome back to this episode of Rad BMX Builds. We've got a special video for you that I think is gonna answer a lot of questions. Let's talk about retro BMX. I get all the time like, are those any good? Are they worth the money? It really comes down to what are you into? What do you like? Do you only like old school or do you like a certain look? And the year really is kind of irrelevant. A lot of these retro BMX bikes have the same cues and stylistic attributes as an old school BMX bike, like loop tails. And you actually wouldn't know it if one just quickly rode by unless you're just an expert at identifying bikes, whether it was old school or new school or retro new school, I guess we can call that. But I happen to have about, I'm gonna pull out about five different retro BMX bikes from my own personal collection and we're gonna talk about them right now. Okay, I've been building BMX bikes now professionally, if you wanna call it that, for about eight years as Rad BMX builds. And in this collection are a good chunk of retro BMX bikes, along with some actual old school BMX bikes like the ones up here on the wall. But I wanna pull out a couple of the retro bikes and we're gonna talk about whether they're worth it, whether you think they're cool, and whether you would buy one or build one yourself. So let's not wait any further. Pull out the very first bike, which is a brand new bike to this collection, and I really like it. Let's check it out. Okay, now I gotta be upfront about something when I'm talking about these bikes. A lot of these bikes were built, not bought and as complete bikes. Uh, a couple were, and we're gonna talk about that. The first one up was a complete bike, but then I built upon that, swapped out a lot of parts and components. And you can actually see a lot of these bike builds in some of my other videos if you wanna go check those out. But up first is the brand new re-released Skyway TA 20 inch. Okay, as you can see, this bike has a lot of old school characteristics with the old uh, flanged Skyway wheels. It's basically the exact same free, uh, geometry as the original 20 inch Skyways. The only difference is the diameter of the seat tube is larger than the originals, but it does come with the one inch threaded headset and did come with your American bottom bracket. And then a few of the things that I upgraded were the red line chain ring, the Skyway decal on the Redline crank, and I added the chain. I added some, you know, little things like brake ends and valve stem caps, red tires. Oh, I don't know, a couple other things like the Amy Unitron grips, donuts, and the number plate. So even though this bike is brand new, it gives you all those old school cues and looks that you would find in an 80s bike. So tell me, would you ride this? And the cool thing about this is like, because it's a newer bike, I wouldn't worry as much about riding something like this versus like my 83 PK Ripper sitting over here. I don't know that I would wanna launch that off anything because I'd worry about damaging it. A bike like this, a newer one, that even though it's brand new looks old, uh, I wouldn't worry about riding. So another cool thing is they kept side pull brakes on this. And I wanna point that out because a lot of the retro bikes use newer parts and components, whereas this one, they stayed true to some of the old school things like that. Now the next bike up is absolutely one of my favorites, hand down, hands down in my entire collection of all of my bikes, whether it's 20 inch, 24 inch, 26 inch, this one's one of my favorites because I have a history with it, but it is a 2011, a limited edition run SEPK Ripper in baby blue. So I bought the frame and fork set and then did an entire build on this bike, which is really cool because I get to pick every single part and component and build it out the way I wanted it. I had a 2011 new in the box and pulled it out and had all the original SE parts and components that it came with and then I sold that bike. I kind of regretted selling it, but I really am happy that I ended up finding a frame and fork set because then I was able to build it the way I wanted it, not the way SE built it. So let's check this out. All right, this bike is just stunning in the iconic baby blue and gold colors. And I use the old school foam grips. You remember these? I just happened to come across them at a local bike shop and it, it brought back some memories because I had a pair on a bike back in the 80s so I thought, why not? I'm gonna put them on there. 
put some Amy bar ends on. I found some pads on eBay. I use the SE Power Bend bars, and everything on this bike is SE. So the stem, headset, pretty much everything. The tires, cranks, sprocket, pedals. So even though it's a Cashamax seat, SE did a collab with them and made SE Cashamax seats. I did put a Cook Brothers uh, seat post on there, SE seat post clamp. And then as you come back, the gold chain, high flanged wheels. These are not the gold SE wheels. I actually got these from uh, BMX Guru and I like that a lot better than the SE wheels. So I could have put SE wheels on it, but I like these better. They have more of an old school look with that flange versus the ones that they have. So that right there is one of my favorite retro BMX bikes in my collection, just because I've had one before and back in the 80s, I rode a baby blue and gold PK Ripper. All right, the next bike I picked is actually pretty cool because it's quite the blend of new school technology and old school looks. So for a retro bike, it did a great job of pulling those two concepts together and creating one really cool looking bike at a really good price if you wanted to go buy one. Up next is the brand new Race Inc. RA20, and it's very retro looking in regards to the same exact looking frame that they ran back in the day. But a lot of the parts and components are what I would consider new school, and we're gonna go over those in a minute. But first, let's take an overall look at the bike. I did change a lot of parts out on this bike to make it even more appropriately old school, and I just wanted an old school look, even though it's a new bike. All right, as you can see, the 20 inch racing bike is an aluminum frame looped tail bike. And it doesn't look just like this when you get it from Race Inc. I did swap out a lot of things like seat, grips, tires, crank set, pedals, a few things like that. So let's go over the bike, check it out. Some of the stuff I added to make it old school were some mushroom grips, some donuts. I found some Race Inc. pads on eBay. I put a taller race ink bar on it, and I put some actual Comp 3 knobby tires, and then the Acorn valve stem cap. They already did a really good job with the wheels, and they even have the high flanged jelly bean cutout hubs, and they laser etched race ink on it, which is a really nice detail. I really like that. But you can see the aluminum frame has the gussets, gussets just like it did back in the day. And then I added these Repop three-piece Pro MX cranks that you can get from Australia. And then some MKS pedals, the black and chrome chain, and then it all follows suit all the way back. So race ink seat post clamp, and then I added a Velo seat to it. Now let's talk about some of the changes, the new school stuff. We have a V-brake on the back, just like the PK Ripper did, but I didn't really talk about it very much. So that's very much new school versus the side pole, old school stuff. Also, the big thing with racing bikes, they come with a 20 millimeter dropout. So you need these basically spacers so you can run a 3 8 axle on there, or you can use some of that larger axle race hubs that are available through many different companies like Box or whatever. You can put those on there if you like, or you can continue to run the old school 3 8 axle stuff uh, that old school bikes had. And then of course you get a new school brake lever to run those V brakes. I also swapped out the brake uh, cable with a Jag wire and got rid of the red one that it came with. And that is a brand new retro Race Inc 20 inch bike with a few parts swapped out just to give it more of an old school look. So comment down below, do you like the way it turned out? Tell me what you think about that. I really like it, I think it turned out pretty good and I think I'm done with that bike. Okay, next up is a very special bike. We're gonna talk about it when I show it to you, but this is also a mix of new school technology, but with old school flair and design. And I chose to have this bike with uh, old school parts, like a side pull brake, a one inch, uh, threaded headset, that type of stuff, forks, I mean. So this bike, um, very special to me, and I'm gonna show you why instead of just trying to tell you. So let's take a look at the next bike. Okay, right here in front of you is the 50th anniversary GT BMX prototype. 
And when I say that, this was the first one that Gary and Craig Turner made in order to promote the 50 year anniversary bikes when they collaborated back with GT, which of course Gary sold a very long time ago, back in the 80s. So this was made in their shop in Southern California and it was the prototype to try to get people to buy the limited amount that they were going to make. And yes, I have another one, the white one there, but this one's very special. I decided to pull this one out because it truly is one of my favorites. So let, I need to be clear about something. They sent me the frame, fork, bars, and seat post. Everything else is my build. I put this bike together. So I'm gonna show you the parts and components that I chose to use on this absolutely gorgeous bike. I had some 90s, uh, maybe early 2000s GT grips, flight donuts, Tech 77 lever with, remember these right here, these little lever covers, I used that. Uh, black and chrome um, brake cable, a 09 airflow plate, GT LP tires. I used the GT Repop hubs on Rhino light chrome hoops, black nipples on the spokes, and black dice valve stem caps. And then back here I used the Tongi headset, which is really rad. And then a polished pro neck stem in one inch. And then a polished pro neck seat post clamp that you can see there with the GT chrome seat post. And then a polished pro neck power disc and then that, so the three pro neck parts there. And then you come around to the side pole bulldogs. Those are also polished. And the bike is just simply gorgeous. Like this bike is show quality, 100%. GT cranks, Welgo pedals. I don't know, it's not a bad angle on this bike. It just looks fast. Now let's talk about the retro part of it. The frame is about 21 inches long versus the old school ones that were somewhere around 18, 18 and a half. So this is more of a pro length, more of a, a larger person, more of a new school length bike, but definitely has all the old school vibes. But I use some newer GT pads that come off some of the larger GT bikes you can buy now. I used a Velo seat. I just put a GT decal on it, so don't freak out. It's just a Velo seat, it's not a GT seat. And I just kind of liked that look. So this is the, I don't know, it's probably about a year old now, so it's probably a 20, uh, yeah. The, so GT was formed in 1972, so this would be a 2022, 50th anniversary prototype. So thank you, Craig, for reaching out, letting me know that you had this. I was more than happy to accept it and build it. And I'm very happy to have this in the collection. Very rad bike. Let me know what you think about that one. Okay, the last bike here I built a while ago. It's a 2019 and they only built 150 of them in chrome. So there's your first hint. This company has been around forever and they've been doing retro bikes for so, so long now. And some of them are quite collectible, uh, in my opinion, to include this one right here. So. Without further ado, the last one, this is the Haro Master. It's a team model and it's done in chrome with pink and blue to match the logo. Let's check it out. Okay, as you can see, I swapped out a lot of parts with this bike. It comes chrome with black tires and black seat and all of that. So I swapped out the pegs, the tires, the brake pads. I even swapped out the bash guard with a pink one, added blue pedals, pink grips, and checker donuts and the checker vance colt pivotal seat so this bike came from epic bmx and i bought it probably a year and a half to two years ago but it is a 2019 it was new in the box shoved off back in the corner and i asked him if i could buy it he said yeah i got it at a pretty good price and i took it home then i pulled it all apart and put all these pieces on so one of my favorite bikes and i've had it ever since that day for the last couple years and I have no intention on getting rid of this bike nor do I have any intention on getting rid of any of the bikes that I've shown you in this video however if I do have any for sale which currently at the time of filming this there are two of them available on the website right now at radbmxbuilds.com if you're not looking for a bike if you want a hat 
shirt, winter's coming, a hoodie, stickers, anything like that, you can find it on the website. So here's my thought on the retro BMX bikes. I think that the majority of them are worth the money. Some of these are sub $1,000. The others you can get up to a couple thousand dollars if you buy them when they're released. A lot of collectors will grab them and flip them, so they get kind of pricey. But you can get these new, and I've, you can find them at places like Race Inc., Planet BMX, um, places like that that'll sell a lot of these reissue, repop bikes like the Skyway that I got at Planet BMX. I mean, there's just a bunch of them. Just keep your eyes out for them because there's some really good deals out there and these bikes are really cool. And with just a few part swaps, you can make a new bike look really old school and not worry about destroying or damaging a 30, 40 year old irreplaceable bike. If you want a new bike and not one of the older ones that, you know, are really cool to hang on walls and you know, having your man cave, but don't necessarily want to rip around and destroy something you can't replace, then get one of these Repop retro bikes, whatever you want to call them. I think they're pretty rad. All right, don't leave the video yet. I'm getting ready to show you something. This is what's coming up in the next video. Okay, I'm filming this video on Tuesday, October 3rd. On October 5th, Thursday, I'm leaving for Tulsa, Oklahoma to the BMX Hall of Fame where the Radical Rick bike is going to be put in the display at the Hall of Fame for about the next six months. So if you want to see this bike in person, get over there and check it out. That will be the next upload. So if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel because you're not going to want to miss that. That's going to be really, really cool. And what an amazing event with a lot of really cool people being inducted. So check that video out. Also, a few bikes I have coming. I did sell the DG but that got me to be able to buy a 79 Torker, an 80s Redline, and a Powerlight. So three bikes coming. If you wanna see those builds, and two of them are gonna be full ground up builds, make sure you subscribe. And if you want some merch, if you want a bike that's for sale, get over to the website. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching the videos. And as always, stay rad.